I think it's been extremely challenging for everyone. I mean, we've been at this for almost a year now, but we're still seeing a lot of understandably increased anxiety, increased depression, increased isolation. Please welcome Beth Gustin, licensed professional counselor, mental health counselor. I have a website and a private practice. It's called Transitioning Through Change, and you can find that at transitioningthroughchange.com. I provide mental health services to individuals who are primarily adjusting to grief and loss. Because we're unable to be together physically in the same space, we are having to find other ways to have our social needs met. Providing much needed guidance for coping during these difficult times. Just do things you can do to start Passing the time and distracting yourself and helping to make yourself feel better. I am starting something called Breaking Barriers with Beth. I would like to provide consulting work or training to businesses to help them learn more about implicit biases, increased awareness and disability etiquette, and also to start a podcast where I interview individuals with disabilities to help others in the world learn about what life is like living with disabilities. And now, please welcome to the Blind Abilities Studio, our guest, Beth Gustin. I actually encourage some people to do this safely, of course, but it's okay to scream into a pillow as long as you take the pillow away from your face, please, after you scream. It can feel really good just to let it out. Welcome to Blind Abilities. I'm Jeff Thompson. And I'm Pete Lane. Our guest today in the studio is Beth Gustin. Beth comes to us all the way from Colorado. Good morning, Beth, and welcome back to Blind Abilities. You were on about a year and a half ago with Jeff and Serena, but times have changed since then, and I think your services and your advice might be even more important to our audience these days. So good morning, and how are you? Good morning, and thank you for having me be here. I love Zoom because I don't have to go anywhere. I can come to you from Colorado. There's technology everywhere. You made it all the way to Minnesota. That's great. And Florida in one day. Other end of the country, Florida, yeah. So Beth, you're a licensed professional counselor, and thanks for coming back on The Blind Abilities. As Pete was saying, times have changed, the COVID and the lockdowns and all that stuff. How have you seen this impact the everyday person, especially students? I think it's been extremely challenging for everyone. I mean, we've been at this for almost a year now, but we're still seeing a lot of understandably increased anxiety, increased depression, increased isolation, partly because it's forced, partly because the depression and anxiety can often cause isolation. I think we're seeing, sadly, a lot of increased rates of suicide across the country. So it's definitely taken its toll and times have most definitely changed. You know, Beth, last time you were talking to Jeff and Serena in the context of of jobs, transitioning to blindness and how people had to cope. But as you mentioned, things are very different now. We're in a year-long pandemic, so many of the things that are affecting our mental health are long-term in the making. So what types of causes are you seeing? Stressors, anxiety, some of the mental impacts that are being caused by this long pandemic? One of the main things that I am seeing is the increased isolation that is caused by the decrease in social support. Because we're unable to be together physically in the same space, we are having to find other ways to have our social needs met. And that can be a challenge for a lot of people if they don't know how to use technology or people aren't able to connect for whatever reason. Maybe they don't have smartphones. Maybe they don't have the knowledge or the devices they might need to otherwise connect with individuals that they would have been able to see in person. The other thing I think we're seeing that goes along with this is maybe your favorite coffee shop is closed down. So you can't complete your morning routine and get your cup of coffee on the way to work because the coffee shop is closed or you're working remotely now. And so we have to find new routines, new structure. We've had to make a lot of adjustments for those who are working to figure out how to navigate working from home and not just sit at our computers all day and do our jobs and work 80 hours a week when we're supposed to only work 40 because it can be really challenging to intentionally create that break and separate work from life. So there's a lot of things that have changed, a lot of increased causes for mental health. There's a lot of directions we can go with that. It's only an hour podcast, so... (laughs) We'll knock it out. (laughs) But how do people cope? You mentioned coping. How do they cope if they're going through something? Usually something sneaks up on them. They don't realize it. You know, they've been inside. They call it cabin fever sometimes. But what are some examples of dealing with it? I've been encouraging a lot of my clients to do a number of things. One, learn something new. Find a new hobby. If there's a book you want to always read, read that book. It'll open doors to other books. Find new music that you didn't know you liked. Just do things you can do to start passing the time and distracting yourself and helping to make yourself feel better. 
meditation has been really big for a lot of people, myself included. And one of the things I've taken up doing over the past year is meditating. I didn't do a lot of it before. I always wanted to, but never made the time for it. And I found myself now intentionally waking up earlier and actually liking that time to myself to really focus on my intentions for the day, focus on making sure my thoughts stay as positive as I can make them throughout the day. I firmly believe we do have the ability to change our thoughts and thus change how we feel. And yes, that takes effort. And yes, that takes practice. Meditation can help with that. I also encourage people to use Zoom and use WhatsApp and other platforms out there to stay connected. We are social creatures and we are meant to be social. Play games online together. My family actually had Zoom calls twice a month because we were 30 miles apart, but we couldn't hang out together. So we would have a Zoom meeting every couple weeks or so. And we did this for probably the first, probably the first six, seven months of the pandemic. It's fallen off now a little bit, but it was really helpful just keeping us connected and giving us something to look forward to. Yeah, Zoom came along at the right time. I mean, financially for them, especially. But more importantly, I think for people, it's become a household term. People know what it means to connect up. And I think a lot of people, especially in the blindness world too, were able to connect up like they've already been doing it. And then everyone started connecting up that way. So it's now an accepted way. So that really changed. But when we're talking about mental health, usually it's a stigma. It's something that you just don't want to talk about. It's something hidden in a way, like a person personal thing. People don't talk about it. People don't call too much to ask about it or something. Is that still true today? I think there is still stigma around it, but I do think it is becoming less stigmatized. I do think there are some positives that have come out of this pandemic. I do think one of the positives is that mental health is being talked about more and the need for it is ever increasing right now. And I think there are providers out there and we can do it over telehealth. You don't have to go anywhere. So if you can't get somewhere or don't want to go somewhere, you don't have to. We can do it over HIPAA compliant platforms. So everything is private and secure. I think that's helping to break down some of those obstacles or barriers that people might have to getting mental health support. I think it's also important to know where to go to get mental health support. You know, it's funny, as you were mentioning, the stigma kind of becoming less of a stigma. It seems like almost every time I turn on the news, whether it's local or national, they're talking about mental health. So I think you're right. I think it is being addressed. And I think that helps to breathe some fresh air into it and get it out of the closet and into the forefront where people can talk about it. And thus the stigma is becoming less and less prevalent these days. Hey, Beth, I got a question for you. Oddly enough, since we're interviewing you. It's odd that I have a question. I know. Hey, (laughs) do you ever feel the need to just go out in the backyard and scream? (laughs) Yes. Yes, I do. And I actually encourage some people to, you know, do this safely, of course, but it's okay to scream into a pillow as long as you take the pillow away from your face, please, after you scream. (laughs) Right. (laughs) It's okay to go out and scream in the backyard. If you drive, please drive responsibly if you do this, but it's okay to drive down the highway with the windows down and scream top of your lungs because no one's going to hear you. It can feel really good just to let it out. Beth, can you tell us more about telehealth? I mean, for listeners that may not know, that's where you're corresponding with a professional through the means of something like Zoom, through video or audio. Exactly. It's very similar to what we're doing right now through Zoom. So I use a software called Simple Practice when I work with my clients in private practice. And Simple Practice, as does like Psychology Today or other platforms, has their own what's called HIPAA compliant platform. So they have their own video conferencing built into the software. And HIPAA compliant just means that your health information, your sessions are not recorded. They are private. There's a lot of layers of technology that keep things secure. But it is very much just like talking back and forth on Zoom. Your business is transitioning through change. Can you tell us about that? Sure. So I have a website and a private practice. It's called Transitioning Through Change, and you can find that at transitioningthroughchange.com. I have a LinkedIn page as well as a Facebook page. It is a private practice. It is only for Colorado residents because I cannot practice across state lines, but I provide individual mental health services to individuals who are primarily adjusting to grief and loss. And so this can be loss due to death. It could be adjusting to living with a disability, a loss that's more pandemic oriented, like job loss, loss of housing, whatever the loss might be, my hope is that I can help individuals work through that loss and regain hope and find purpose again. I have looked at your Facebook page and it seems to be very complete with resources and things like that. Is there a spot there, Beth, for like an open forum or an open chat amongst viewers or an audience? Can I come in, for example, and post a question and others see it and comment? Or does it just go straight to you? 
On my Facebook page, there is a place to directly contact me where you can message me directly, but there's also posts that I put up and you're welcome to comment on those posts. And I do encourage dialogue and feedback and conversation. I honestly don't know if I have it set up to where others can post on the page. I don't think that feature is enabled at the moment. It's got a world of resources on it, and I would recommend going to it and checking out what sources of information you've got on there. Beth, what advice would you give to someone who may be going through some challenging times like most of us are? You know, the word mental health may cross their mind other than screaming into a pillow and moving your head away from it after you're done. What advice would you give to someone who is contemplating seeking out mental health solution? I encourage anyone who thinks they might benefit from talking to someone, even for a couple sessions, to find someone. So those of you who do not live in Colorado or would like other options, there is a website called psychologytoday.com. And on that website is a wealth of other therapists across the country who can provide mental health services in your state. And you can search by zip code and you can search by gender. If you have a gender preference, you can search by whatever you're looking for to receive help with, like anxiety, depression, or grief. That's probably the best place I would start if you're looking for some mental health support because it is a very good resource to find a therapist. There's a lot of places across the country, and I don't know other resources in other countries, but Google something like sadness need help or find a therapist to put your zip code in. Be creative with your Google searches and you will find support. Beth, I'm thinking of our blind audience in particular and how the prolonged pandemic may be affecting us perhaps differently than the majority of the population. But one thing I keep landing on is isolation. I'm wondering, would you think that blind people are better equipped to handle a prolonged quarantine, lockdown, or isolation because we've contended with that type of thing throughout our entire lives and that the pandemic is really presenting something that's not really different than what we're used to? It makes sense. And I think, yes, I do think as a whole, the blind community, we're better equipped to handle the isolation that the pandemic has caused because as we said earlier, we are used to using services like Zoom and WhatsApp and other platforms to help us stay connected. The one challenge I do think that hasn't been something we're used to is if we do go out in public, how the heck do we know we're six feet apart and how do we say that? So the social distancing piece, I think, has presented some challenges when we are out in public. Otherwise, I do agree with you, Pete. I do think as a whole, the blind community is better equipped to handle the isolation. Side. Beth, you've talked about something coming up new. It's titled Breaking Barriers with Beth. Can you elaborate on that? Sure. So because I apparently don't think that working a full-time job in community mental health and a private practice is enough, <laughs> my hope with Breaking Barriers with Beth is twofold. One, I would like to provide consulting work or training to businesses, helping individuals who work in, for example, restaurants or retail or healthcare, and helping them better understand what challenges or obstacles a person with a disability might be facing in their establishment and how they can be better equipped and better poised to help those individuals when they come into their business so that the experience is better for everyone involved and they have increased patronage to their business. So you'll be providing training on what understanding what disabled individuals are experiencing and then maybe how to interact and how to speak and you know what language to use, what language not to use, things along those lines? Things along those lines, yes, to help them learn more about implicit biases, increased awareness and then disability etiquette so that they can more appropriately interact with individuals with disabilities and thus increase the likelihood of return customers. We all have implicit bias. Implicit bias is the concept where we might have unconscious beliefs about someone or a group of people or something, and we don't know necessarily where it came from, but it plays out in how we interact with other people. So if we can look at our own implicit biases and become aware of them, we can also then transition to better better disability etiquette, for lack of a better phrase. And I'm also hoping to start a podcast of the same name where I interview individuals with disabilities who then help others in the world learn about what life is like living with disabilities. So whether it's blindness or something else, I'm hoping to have interviews and just increase awareness and thus hopefully break down some barriers and open up a safe space for conversations about tough topics. I think that's an important area. What do they call a bedside manner for a doctor? Sometimes they don't get it. Like even a lot of times people go to a doctor and they say, you're going to go blind. We won't need another appointment. There you go. They don't get anything like that. So I'm sure it's widespread across the caregivers, businesses, awareness on how we like to be treated or how we should be treated. I think it's a good idea. Yeah, I think it's more how we should be treated. I went to the eye doctor a while back and the lady was yelling at me, like literally raised her voice yelling at me, look left, look right after I just told her my eyes don't do that. I don't have the ability to control my eye muscles. So I can't look left or look right. I knew it was her. I knew it wasn't me, but I still felt very uncomfortable in that experience. 
experience. And I wanted to in that moment be like, hey, can I just take a couple seconds and educate you nicely? <laughs> Those are the things I really want to provide some training or consulting work on for businesses because no one intentionally means to be a jerk. I know it's not intentional. All of us can commit what are called microaggressions and really, really hurt somebody or really trigger something for somebody. And I think we need to find a way to help everyone feel more comfortable in a safe way to not do that. Well, and you mentioned retail businesses and I'm recalling restaurants and retail stores that I've gone into and just felt awkward and uncomfortable because that person is awkward and uncomfortable with having to deal with a blind person. So if for no other reason, then maybe you'll put them at ease and that will make their interactions with customers all the better. That's my hope. It's educating on soft skills as well as just proper etiquette, if you will. And I see a need for it and I'm hoping that it'll be well received. We'll see where it goes. There's a line, does he want sugar? (laughs) <laughs> That's right. I don't know. Why don't you ask her? Because she can talk for herself, you know, and it's it's just people don't know what they don't know. I don't want to embarrass anyone. I don't want to chastise anyone. So that's something I'm hoping to offer. I think those moments that we all have throughout life, there's also a little spot there that could be an education moment if people would have the time to listen. You know, if you have a elevator speech that you could just say or just alleviate the situation with a little explanation before the light changes or before the crosswalk opens up, something like that. I think it's great that if people can be that ambassador, be that person that spreads a little education to them too. And folks can pay attention to that by following you on Facebook or getting onto your website. Yes. So my website is www.transitioningthroughchange.com. You're welcome to email me at beth at transitioningthroughchange.com. You're welcome to follow me on Facebook. You're welcome to follow me on LinkedIn. I'm in both places. You can find me under Beth Gustin on LinkedIn or the Transitioning Through Change Facebook page. Feel free to message me if I can be of any help. I'm glad to do so. Well, that's great. Thank you so much, Beth, for joining us. Best of luck as we continue through this pandemic, hopefully with the light at the end of the tunnel. Thank you for having me again. I really appreciate being here and thank you both for your time. Jeff and I want to thank Beth Gustin for joining us on Blind Abilities today. You can find more about Beth and her business on her website at www.transitioningforchange.com. Or you can send an email to Beth at transitioningforchange.com. You can find Beth on LinkedIn or on her Facebook group, Transitioning for Change. And from all of us here at Blind Abilities, through these challenging times, to you, your family, and friends, stay well, stay informed, and stay strong. Thank you so much for listening, and have a great day. When we share what we see through through each each other's other's eyes, eyes, we can then then begin begin to bridge the gap gap between between the limited limited expectations and the reality reality of blind abilities. abilities. For more podcasts with a blindness perspective, check us out on the web at www.blindabilities.com. On Twitter at Blind Abilities, download our app from the App Store, Blind Abilities, that's two words, or send us an email at info at blindabilities.com. Thanks for listening.